Hi, I'm Brennan Hicks, a sophomore at the University of Arkansas and a current art history student. Today we will explore the Crystal Bridges Museum in Northwest Arkansas, which was generously funded by the esteemed Walton family. As you walk through this illustrious museum that houses an array of famous North American artworks and installations, it's clear that even the building itself is a magnificent work of art. Upon, enter upon the entrance from Walker Landing to the Lower North Exhibition Galleries, there is a peculiar piece of artwork that demands attention. It is here that we find the larger-than-life John Cage Robot 2 by video artist Namjoon Pike. Placed at the corner of a solid wall in a glass pane window, the installation clearly commands the space in which it is placed. This captivating array of seemingly random objects works to grab the notice of any passerby. Designed and constructed by Namjoon Pike, this work is representative of the video art style that its creators so worked to pioneer. As one of Pike's later installations, made in 1995, it is clear that the piece must have held significant value with the artist. The, the work is named in tribute to the late John Cage, a prominent experimental composer and Buddhist practitioner. Coupling the title of the artwork, Namjoon Pike incorporated multiple facets of John Cage's life, including both musical and religious representations. Comprising the body of work is a large cabinetry built in the style of a very simply formed robot. This robot appears anthropomorphic in shape, having a head, a torso, two legs, and two arms, one of which holds a basket of a sort of items. These body parts, however, are the comparison of 11 vintage wood TV cabinets, 10 Panasonic and 1 Samsung Keller receivers, 2 DVD players, and 2 channels of original Pike software. These elements stack to resemble a vague human-like robot create a balancing effect in which the body parts are symmetrical. Built in rectangular and square shapes, John Cage Robot 2 pleases the young and old alike. The vintage television sets work to express an antiquing quality of the piece, which is then juxtaposed by the constantly flashing and looping television screens. The dark brown of the television sets works to create a calming effect, while the bright flashing screens create an unsettling apprehension towards the work. With the rich brown, there is a sense of stability as it provides structure to the form. As your eyes dart from colored piano keys to the brightly flashing screens, the brown remains constant. This consistent use of brown emulates a notion of welcoming and comfort as the viewer tries to make sense of the captivatingly busy artwork. The content of the work includes a vast array of objects convening to a single form. Coupling the placement of the color screens, piano parts are strewn across the front of the installation in irregular crosshatches, forming diagonals upon the body of work. Pike's inclusion of piano pieces is a clear representational homage to his lifetime friend and composer, John Cage. Also nodding at John Cage's music, Namjoon Pike's inclusion of color video actually plays brief clips from Pike's earlier documentary about Cage's performances. It becomes quickly noticeable that although there appears to be a great amount of motion and action occurring within the artwork, the overall piece and the sound are static. This was not by mistake. Of his experimental compositions, John Cage is best known for his piece titled 433, in which the performer spends the entirety of the song simply sitting with an instrument in silence. This silence is both a nod to the Buddhist notion of noble silence, as well as the experiment with social and environmental sounds. From this, it is indicative that Pike's construction of John Cage Robot 2 seeks to emulate that silence. Although the televisions are constantly flashing colors and changing, there is no sound. As such, the piece serves the same purpose as 433, making the audience view the performance of the robot while subconsciously being forced to listen to their surroundings rather than to the video's audio. Further echoing the traces of Buddhism, Pike includes references such as the Manual of Zen Buddhism that can be found in the Hanging Basket. Through his robot series, Pike aimed to produce a philosophy of cybernetics, or a study of communication processes. With carefully picked images that constantly change, combined with the static bulk of technology, Pike explored the emergence of technological revolution and its effect on communication and discourse amongst the public. His piece works to permute the transitory character of performance art with the durability of the created project, as was common for pieces of early video art. Exiting the latter stages of postmodern art, much of Pike's work contains clear influences of avant-garde, in which artists sought to challenge preconceptions of art and form. The abstract expressionist style combined with the use of manufactured items with traditional art materials, while pop art emerged with focus on mass production and the consumer culture. For Pike, the infusion of the television sets and moving imagery represented the dawning age of technology. His stacking of objects to depict a human form 
is not intended as a simple irony and juxtaposition, but rather challenges the idea that humanity diminishes in the face of technological obsession. Although conveying the early messages of video art, Bill Viola's The Crossing exemplifies the use of video and sound to influence the reception of an installation. With the two sequences set side by side, Viola's piece depicts two men that are simultaneously consumed by elemental powers, one by fire and the other by water. In both videos, the human forms that appear eventually dilute to forms that are completely consumed by nature, implying a transition from the physical to the spiritual. This, this transition mirrors Pike's own Buddhist influences that resulted in blurred human-like forms in his robot series. Both artworks utilize sound to emphasize their power. Pike's intended absence of audio reminds the viewer of the sounds from their surroundings, while Viola's works to portray the vast power of nature. As one stands in front of Pike's John Cage Robot 2, there is an overwhelming sense that you are simply in the company of another person. The structure does not move or say anything, but the physical arrangement of the television cabinets and the larger-than-life size both work to posture the piece into an interestingly personified presence. Pike's construction feels as though it could be placed in the middle of a crowd and simply come alive. Differing this, Viola's piece is less of a physical being and more of a digital one. While both artists greatly influence the genre of digital and video art, it is clear that the message extended through Viola's piece was intended to explore the possibilities of digitalization, whereas Pike's works to connect the relationship between the physical and the digital. The Crossing implements dark images that are consumed by the bright, colors of fire and water, eventually overwhelming the image. However, in John Cage Robot, there is a synchronization taking place in which the human form and the digital images can exist mutually, rather than exclusively. Where John Cage Robot commands the space in which it is placed, the crossing is more intended for the placement within a darker room that would make the viewer focus on both the image as well as the elemental sounds found within the video. Although there is great symbolism and clear pictorial representations of cultural and philosophical messages with John Cage Robot 2, it was the simple flashing of videos that first drew me to the installation. But once seduced by the colors, it becomes hard to turn away from the piece. One begins, one begins to ponder the placement of piano parts on the image. Why is there a basket there? And why are there chess pieces and wooden mushrooms inside that basket? What is the robot supposed to be doing? All of these questions race through my head because although there are logical explanations for each part of the installation, it continually works to create wonder and inspire awe. Simply put, you don't want to look away because there seems to be something more to it.